Buying a home is likely one of the biggest investments you will ever make. And if you're moving to a new state, this can be a pretty complicated process. And you don't want to make the process even more difficult by making some pretty easily avoidable mistakes. There are a few limitations buyers also put on themselves that make this hard process even more difficult. So what should you avoid doing during your home search and what do you need to know before making this move? Hi, I'm Sarah Mislowski with Key Point Homes Group, a local real estate agent right here in the Northeast Metro Atlanta area. And I help clients from all over relocate right here to Georgia. During this, I have witnessed some of these mistakes firsthand and it's my job as your real estate agent to help guide you away from some of these pitfalls. So what do you need to know before buying a home? One of the biggest mistakes people make is putting themselves in a position where they become house poor. You may have heard the saying, marry the house, date the rate, floating around in the real estate world. While that sentiment works for some home buyers, it's not always the best advice if you are working with a very tight budget. The meaning behind that saying is that you should buy the house that you love and the one that best fits your needs and not put too much worry on the interest rate you are paying in order to buy the home with the goal of refinancing to a lower interest rate at a later time. Now, this makes sense if the monthly payment, while still at the higher interest rate, is still well within your budget and doesn't stretch you thin financially because there is no guarantee that interest rates will go down or on a timeline of when you can expect to be able to refinance. One thing I would suggest is to avoid buying a house that is at the top end of your budget. Unless you have already made adjustments to your price point you are looking at to account for the higher interest rate. You do not want to put yourself in a position where your mortgage payment is bleeding you dry and leaving you with nothing left over to spend for the rest of the month. You need to take a hard look at your spending habits and make sure that a mortgage payment at this level will still allow you to live the lifestyle you have been living or decide if you're willing to scale back your spending in other areas to accommodate this. Oftentimes people will stretch themselves thin just to be in a certain town or school district or within a certain distance from a family member or job when they could live five or 10 minutes away farther in a different town where they wouldn't have to pay so much for a home. One of the best ways to figure out what price point you should be shopping in is to figure out what you can afford as far as a monthly payment goes and then work backwards from there. A great lender will help you to calculate what this looks like in terms of purchase price. That way we know to make sure that we are at or below the number to make sure you are comfortable with your monthly payment. If you've always been a renter and you have never bought before, you also need to take into consideration that you will need emergency funds for if and when something goes wrong in the house. You can't just call your landlord when the AC goes out. Now it's your problem. So you don't want to drain all of your savings so you can be prepared for these unexpected expenses that come up whenever you are owning a house. That's the joy of home ownership. Another big mistake I see people make, especially those who are relocating here, is limiting themselves to one specific town or area. Like I just mentioned, people will create these very strict parameters of where they want to be when just a short drive into the next town over could save them significant amounts of money while still being close enough to access all of the amenities that were drawing them to that other area to begin with. Or I will get people who are open to a 40 to 45 minute commute to work. And I know that making this drive twice a day, Monday through Friday is going to get old very quickly. Now on the flip side of that, people will want to move to the area to be close to family members and set a certain time commute that they are willing to be from their family member. They'll say, my sister lives in the area and I don't want to be more than 20 minutes away from her. Now trust me, I love my sister just as much as you love yours, but sometimes you can find a whole world of other options if you're willing to drive an extra 10 or so minutes when you go and visit her a couple of times a month or even every week and pay a significantly lower amount of money for your home. You can buy a nicer, more affordable home 30 minutes away from her as opposed to a less desirable house that costs more money but is 10 minutes closer for your occasional visit. Now, it's okay to be picky. I know that buying a house is a huge investment and you want to buy what you want, but if you have a very specific criteria that you don't have any flexibility on, this can make your home search very difficult and often eliminates a ton of really amazing properties from your search that could have been a really great fit if you could give up that one piece of criteria. 
something that I have actually had several clients have as a non-negotiable on their wish list is a gas stove. Now there are some things that I understand are absolute must haves, like a master bedroom on the main level to avoid falling on stairs, no steep driveways because you drive small cars, a minimum bedroom count to make sure there's enough space for everyone, enough yard space for the dogs to run around, all of these things make sense and can't really be changed in a home, so they need to be there right from the start. Now, something like whether you are cooking on gas or electric, to me, seems like something that should not entirely rule out a house that meets all of your criteria. But we all view things differently and different things are priorities to different people. Another criteria people get hung up on that I personally think we have bigger battles to fight is whether a home is on a septic or public sewer. I've talked extensively about septic tanks and how about 50% of homes here in Georgia have them. A lot of people think they are a big expensive thing or there's a lot of upkeep, but that's really not the case. If you are pumping your tank every three to five years like recommended, which will cost you around 300 to $500, you can keep your system in great working order and avoid any major costly repairs. If you are living in a house with sewer, you will obviously have to pay a monthly sewer bill, so either scenario is going to cost you money. What do you think? Is that something that you would pass up on a perfectly good house? Let me know in the comments below. Not spending enough time in the town you are moving to before committing to buy a home can put you in a position to be surprised and not necessarily for the best. People will only spend a brief amount of time in the area that they're buying a home in and they don't hardly know anything about it. They don't pay attention to how close or far from grocery stores and restaurants they are, how long it takes to get to the interstate from their new home, or what their commute will look like during the times that they are gonna be making the actual drive. My best piece of advice, if you are in town buying a house here, when you live in another state is once you have found what you think is the perfect house, switch hotels to one that's as close to this home as possible to get a feel for what it's like to actually live there. Is the neighborhood on a busy road and you're going to have to sit and wait for five minutes or more to get out every time you try to leave the neighborhood? Does traffic getting to your office really make your commute an hour long instead of the 45 minutes GPS tells you it will take? These are things that people don't figure out until they have already bought their home. So I would recommend trying to acclimate to the area before buying a house. Okay, the next mistake can be one of the biggest headaches when trying to purchase a home and that is working with people who aren't very well versed in the area or matter that you are asking them for help. For example, I had a buyer once whose brother was a mortgage lender but he lived in California and primarily only dealt with loans for California based clients. Of course my clients trusted his brother and wanted him to do the loan as opposed to someone here locally even though they know the process here better. Now a lender can be licensed to work in several states but every state does things a little bit differently and the lending process and requirements in California are very different than they are here in Georgia. Because of his lack of knowledge on how things work here in Georgia he ended up messing things up with the loan and we had to delay closing which caused quite a fiasco because everyone already had moving trucks ready for closing the sellers were vacating the home the day of closing and they needed that money to purchase their next home it really put a damper on things because the lender didn't know what he was doing of course people are drawn to having a family member or someone they have known for a long time help them with a major purchase like buying a house but that doesn't always mean they are the best person for the job i know if these clients worked with my recommended local lenders we would not have run into these same issues and would have been able to close on time without any major concerns. There have been many times where buyers have been adamant that they have a great relationship with their personal bank and they want to use them to apply for a loan. And then after several weeks of unanswered phone calls and poor communication, they take me up on my offer for a local highly recommended lender who is going to make their purchase a top priority. I got an email from a dear client the other day who went through this whole scenario and said, I can now see firsthand how I have experienced all of the bad things you mentioned about big national banks. I don't say this to say, I told you so, <laughs> but after working in this field and going through as many different transactions as I have, hundreds. I have many firsthand experiences from the good, the bad, 
and the ugly. So I want to share these experiences with you and help you avoid them from the start. It is very important to work with people who are highly knowledgeable about the area, the process, and how to best serve you. You need someone working to help you that knows the ins and outs of the entire process in order to serve you best. Looking to relocate to Georgia from another state? That is what I specialize in. Just last year, I helped over 60 families do exactly that. I know exactly how to work with people who are new to the state, whether they are coming here for jobs or lifestyle or to be closer to family. Whether you have a home to sell in your current state and need to coordinate the sale of your home in order to purchase here, or if you've already closed and are ready to buy with cash, or you are currently renting and this will be your first purchase, I know how to help you make this process as smooth and easy as possible. Relocating to a new state is a huge process and it can be very stressful. And there is a lot more involved than just buying a home. So your agent needs to know how to best guide you. If North Georgia is the place that you have settled on, I want to be your real estate agent. If it's somewhere else in the country, I still want you to be in the very best hands. So feel free to reach out to me for a great recommendation for an agent in another area. I know all the right questions and background information to figure out if someone is going to be able to get the job done for you. So I'm more than happy to get you connected to a great agent. This doesn't just apply to agents and lenders. It holds true with things like roofers, electricians, painters, and so on. I had a client who needed a new roof and I have an absolutely amazing roofer that I was happy to share. I got a call from the buyer about a month or so after they moved in and they wanted to know about how they could make an insurance claim after a heavy rainstorm. The roof leaked and water came pouring into their house and it made a huge mess in their daughter's bedroom. I was shocked to hear this so I asked more questions and it turns out they used a different roofing company than the one that I recommended and the roof itself cost them more money than it would have from my recommendation. Not to mention the horrible job they ended up with that was leaking after a few weeks after it was done and not to mention the repairs that they had to do after using this other company. Like I mentioned, this is not my first rodeo. I have helped many people with different issues and I know who I would put my trust in after all of these experiences. So what do you think? Do any of these things make you consider how you might go about your search? If you're thinking about making a move here to Georgia, I want to help you avoid these mistakes and make this as easy of a process as possible and represent you when you purchase your home. You can book a call with me below. There is a link in the pinned comments. And if you need a great recommendation for an agent in another state, a mortgage lender, or anything like that, let me know. I'm happy to help. If you're thinking about making a move to Georgia, make sure you check out this video next.